Thank you very much. It's great to be here on Afternoon Only Beats. Um, my birth name is Kumi. You know, most people call me Frank Donga. That's what you know me by. I call me Frank Donga. Uh, Kumi you know, is uh, I'm from a simple, humble family. I went to school like everybody else. I did first degree. After an interesting childhood, filled with a manner of uh, cartoons, comedy films, and experiences raising animals as pets. I had a secondary education, uh, went on to the university and studied agricultural sciences for his first degree and did uh, his master's degree in genetics. And afterwards, he got his first job in Lagos because he lived in Ibadan. He got his first job in Lagos uh, as an assignment editor in a news channel. So broadcast journalism was my first official job. I was trained by a fantastic team of professionals uh, from all over the world, uh, led by Ken Steven himself. Uh, a former vice president of CNN. Yeah, I uh, had an interesting work life. And uh, in the course of always making people subconsciously laugh and uh, goofing around from school days, doing, imp doing impressions of my lecturers, and just generally loving storytelling, I almost accidentally stumbled on the interview series with a couple of my friends. What type of work do you do? I'm a professional man. I'm a professional. And as somebody that is a professional now, any work. And you know, I thought of a name for myself. I wanted a first name that sounded neutral and wasn't traceable to any ethnicity or tribe in the, in the African context. And I also wanted a last name that sounded African. So I spun a few names around in my head and I think Frank stuck. Now, maybe that is because I have a soft spot for Frank Spencer, uh, Crawford, uh, I think he's a fantastic uh, comic actor. So I wouldn't know, but Frank sounded like a good first name and Donga sounded decent enough after a few attempts at Pung, Pungi, Pangi, Bingo, Binga, Donga, 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 okay, Donga sounds African enough. Now that I've started. When uh, exactly did I make a switch from agriculture to entertainment? I don't think there was a switch. I had always been doing both simultaneously. If I recall quite correctly, from my school days, I was uh, a music director. I played the lead guitar, the bass guitar, and the keyboards. I was a singer. I was a music instructor from my school days. Uh, I always, always loved the arts. Um, I was a fine artist in secondary school. I made comics with a group of friends. We would make comics and sell them, artworks. So I'd always been close to the art or expression in that form. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't like a switch, it had always been there. And science was my first love. I, I, I loved asking questions and finding answers to those questions. And life, nature, engineering, you know, things like that, forces interested me, caught my fancy and I studied sciences. So it was, everything was like together from the very start. But um, because I got my first official job, in journalism, as a broadcast journalist, uh, I kind of tended more towards the arts. After running a poultry farm successfully, by the way, so I got a job, switched from the poultry farm to broadcast journalism, and in the course of just being me, the goofy or serious chap in the newsroom at work, so I think there was a day a group of friends who were talking and they would always laugh and roll on the floor. I mean, practically roll on the floor. I wouldn't find what I said funny, but they found it funny. And I said, maybe we should record some of these things one of these days and put it out there on the internet. We never really got to that part until one day I did this again and they were laughing seriously. And this time I said, you know what, you guys, just grab the camera, grab the mic. Tonight we are recording. And then we recorded the very first episode of the interview called Cora Limited. What do you think about Cora Limited? Coral Limited. They are, no matter what they do, they can't be like this company. Whether they are limited or not limited, they are already limited anyway because this company is better than them. Coral Limited, or, or, they are biting the dust. They are not, they are nowhere to be found. They are, I think they are, they say they stole some money or they are fraudulent uh, company. Nothing like that, sir, nothing. The second interview was visa application and 
that was the beginning of the rest of <laughs> how things turned out. My journey so far in the entertainment industry in Nigeria, Nollywood, has been very smooth and uh, I thank God for that. Uh, thank all the people that have helped and supported me one way or the other. Thank the fans, you guys out there. My journey is a bit uh, unique in that it's not every time you see someone just cross over from behind the camera, essentially, uh, to the front of a lens, uh, doing short skits on the internet, on the internet uh, from there, boom, to the big screen and TV. So the journey has been really, really smooth for me. A lot of things to learn from you know, interacting with people, uh, managing relationships, and uh, uh, the business of entertainment in Nigeria. There's a whole lot to take in, but really my journey has been smooth, so I'm, I'm grateful. I wouldn't have been here without God, but you are the support of you are amazing people. Hmm. A typical day in the life of Tony Dubu starts with waking up in the morning, with, uh, thanking God for the day, and uh, I don't have a typical routine, I just go with the flow. If I remember by 7 o'clock I give somebody an appointment and I wake up 15 minutes to 7, I wake up with that rush. Thank God for the day and rush up like that, you know. Nobody's trying to go back, I bounce off you. So, uh, but essentially my day is all about meetings, uh, writing, comedy sketches. I have a place where I write. My ideas are popping into my head while I'm driving. I can I park on the road for a few minutes, tap it on my phone, send it to the database remotely, uh, finish up a few edits I have in post-production, uh, sometimes do some camera work. Uh, by that, I mean handling the camera to record a few clips. Sometimes I'm on the phone with clients or friends or my team discussing an idea. Uh, some, sometimes just generally doing what every person does at home. You know. Sometimes I cook and sometimes I watch movies. I love watching cartoons and other times I find time to go to the cinema and watch my favorite animation. Man, I love animation. I love watching animation, especially in the cinema. If I wasn't an actor or a comedian, I'll be a molecular geneticist. Those are the people you hold responsible for talking about things like gene splicing, cloning, recombinant DNA, uh, finding cures to genetic disorders and diseases. You know, I've probably been in one laboratory somewhere in the world behind a microscope or electroforensic machine working on the genomic pool of the human race or some other things and looking for the source of a disease or the cure to it. That's what I probably be doing. I know it sounds boring, I want to be doing that. But if I get a chance and I have to, I still go do it. Nothing stops me. Follow your dream as long as it's not a nightmare. My advice for young folks who want to, or anybody as a matter of fact, who wants to uh, tell this similar career path like mine, maybe you have something you're doing, you want to switch over to the entertainment industry in Nigeria, in Africa, or anywhere in the world. The first thing I would say is, uh, do you enjoy it? I enjoy what I'm doing. I am I thoroughly enjoying it. I enjoy it very well. I mean, it doesn't take anything from me because this is really who I am. I don't even feel it's work. It's like a footballer getting paid to run after a round ball, a round leather, with other, is it 20, 22 other guys. You know, it's fun. You're getting paid to do what you love. So do you love it? Do you enjoy it? Don't go to it because of money. No. Money should be the least motivating factor. Because you might not get it. So what's going to sustain you in the period when things are dry or when there's a lot of demand and pressure? Because you could always be thinking, how much are they paying me for this thing? You will be the first thought that will come into your mind. Why am I doing this? I could be doing other things. So if you want to get into this kind of career, entertainment, comedy, or acting, ask yourself, do you truly enjoy it? One. Two. Are you unique in any way? What are you bringing to the table that's different from what other people are doing and what they have? Three, study, study, study seriously. And by study, I'm not saying just open books. The internet, observe people around you. 
watch movies you want to go into movie production you need just make sense to watch movies from all parts of the world that you can lay your hands on it takes a lot of time and effort you invest in yourself learn ask questions from people who have done it or that are doing it watch and learn read ask questions if you have the opportunity be an apprentice with people who are doing it join an organization freelance every time money 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 something i like freelance what spend one week here one month there six months there if you get the opportunity in turn on a film set in a production company work for free learn knowledge once you learn anybody can take it from you so uh those are the things and three i mean you know, so if i've lost count you are listening if you are listening you will know the next one learn the business side of things because at the end of the day it's not about opening feet and running up and down red carpet so you all oh, will blow you on guy will blow you if you don't put the business side of it in. you need to deliberate it's just not something you jump into the entertainment business it should be you show but there's a business angle to it so learn how to make money to convert your time your talent and your abilities into cash you need to learn that that should be you need to be disciplined because if and when the money does come whatever trickles come in you need to understand that it's not going to be like that forever if it's small now it's not going to be like that forever it's going to blow up if it's blowing up now there's a chance it might trickle down later so invest make the best of whatever you're getting from your time and effort and talent as an entertainer and then the last one you have to be dynamic always evolve people get tired very easily especially africans especially nigerians you have to keep feeding them with something new don't put everything you have on the table at the same time you can sing you can dance you can rap you can act you can comedy you can and you do everything at the same time okay once you do that one for four five six years you'll know, still finish don't they now still finish slow down one after the other and plan your game plan your game plan we don't plan enough in africa plan well that's why the whole oh, Africa and this country is in a mess. We don't plan well. And that's why you get mediocre products here and there. Uh, I said it. Plan. We need to plan better. After I was said and done. Inspiration comes from God. Near God. You will, not, you, you, you will not hurt you. I believe inspiration and talent comes from God. Ask God for help. And stay, stay your lane. Don't do past yourself. His name have said it. It's not everything you must do. And join them to do. Finally, keep it on social media if it's not necessary. There, ah, keep your personal matter to yourself. You know, everything that time you publish, you mean, I'm drinking, I'm, I'm sleeping, I'm waking, I'm dreaming. Put the phone to your head, like, capture your dream in me. Now, wow, slow down. You can be great. Work on yourself, learn, eyes open, observe, and work hard. It's not that deep. Peace out.